Helmer Sanders Brahm strikes a brutal picture in 1980s Germany, Pale Mother. A semi-autobiographical piece from Brahms about her parents, particularly focused on the years leading up to and following the downfall of the Nazi regime. Just for clarification, I chose not to include screen caps featuring too much Nazi imagery or insignias, not only because it is presumably not permitted on this platform, understandably so, but more that I know it is a hurtful reminder to people of extremely upsetting experiences and I want to try and prevent causing this. Now, naturally, much of the film features these things. It is set during the Nazi era, and so I abstained from displaying too much of that in this upload. So that being said, I would still wholly recommend one spend time with Germany Pale Mother, if they're so inclined, as long as I understand what they might be getting into with it. I don't think its use of imagery is invalid whatsoever. It is set in history, after all, and the film couldn't be more disdainful of Nazism. They reign caused untold suffering for many nations and peoples, among those two were the people of Germany. Brahms makes no secret of the many Germans who were complicit and excited for Hitler's homicidal sadism, and of West Germany's willingness to ignore previous Nazi party loyalty in deciding upon its administrators. She does, however, attempt to reconcile her parents' place in this genocidal machine to individuals who tried to hide away from this world their love as a seemingly impenetrable shield, you know, a fortress of solitude away from the realities of, of the world of Germany at this time. Vervetu become essentially, among Nazism's abhorrently high casualties, physical or psychological. I would like to recommend Jorge Luis Borges' text as a short story titled Deutsches Requiem for a attempt to hypothesize the causes of such barbarism in the average German man. Germany Pale Mother is a ruthlessly powerful film, one of the most emotionally affecting I have viewed from the 20th century. I am utterly stunned that Brahms chose to share such intimate and traumatic details from her early life here. I'd like to read out the plot synopsis of this film as featured on the Wikipedia. In the 1930s, Hans is attracted to Lena, the only dark-haired one of a German family of seven sisters. As Hans's friend Ulrich is a member of the Nazi party, Lena is reluctant to see Hans, but after ascertaining that Hans is not a Nazi, she agrees to see him, and they eventually marry. On Lena's birthday, she learns that Hans has been conscripted to fight in Poland because he is a low-level bureaucrat who is not in the party, while Ulrich has been spared. In Poland, Hans murders civilians and has a hard time adjusting to war, like many other soldiers. When he returns on leave, he and Lena conceive a child, Anna, who is born during an air raid. After their home is bombed, Lene takes Anna to see Hans, back on a two-day leave. Though Lene is happy to see him, he becomes jealous of Anna and Anna of him. To keep herself and Anna safe from the war, Lene travels on tracks on foot across the country. After the war, she is raped by two American soldiers in front of Anna. Eventually heading home, Lene reunites with, reunites with her sister and later Hans. Over time, their reunion unravels as he is continually paranoid that she was unfaithful when he was away. He is also harsh of Anna over her schoolwork, sporadically beating her and constantly criticising her. After the war, he reunites with Ulrich, who briefly encourages Anna to tease Hans. The teasing breaks Hans' cheerful mood, whose fragility is likely due to post-traumatic stress, leading him to beat Anna to tears. Depressed, Lena contracts facial paralysis. Hans comes home, happy about his promotion, to discover his wife's condition. He takes her to a doctor, who informs him that all her teeth must be removed to stop the paralysis from spreading. Against her will, Hans, noting that life is more important, orders the extraction. This further isolates and depresses Lena, whose facial paralysis persists, who takes to her bed, withdraws from Anna, and wears a veil when she has to go out. Ulrich and Hans maintain good relations, until one night, after they have been drinking, Hans learns Ulrich has been promoted above him. Ulrich justifies it by his qualifications. Hans, embittered by Ulrich's promotions, no longer attracted to Lena and tired of her depression, does not react when Lena tells him she does not want to live anymore. He leaves for work and Lena unlocks herself in the bathroom, intending to gas herself. Anna cries and begs her to come out, and eventually she does. This is some of the most heartbreaking final spoken lines of dialogue in a film. I almost don't want to spoil them here. No, I will. I've spoiled the film already, although... 
leave now if you don't want to hear this at least it's Helmisandas Brahm writing a this is voiceover which comes in and out throughout the film hers she, she, she says something along the lines of I'll just be clear I don't know if it's her speaking or if she's gotten another voice actress to speak over, to speak the lines I assume she's written them obviously obviously she's written them she's scripted the film she writes sometimes I'm not sure if I'm still knocking on the door she's that sh she, she still doesn't know sometimes she feels sick she's terrified she's still Anna knocking on the door begging her mother to come out of the bathroom she doesn't know if everything after that is just some dream some imaginary fantasy she's concocted to convince herself that she will come out and that's what will happen it's it pierces me 